there's at least two <coughs> Swedish filmmakers. Swedish filmmakers, sorry. In the Criterion Collection. But I only have one. And I'm sure you can guess who that is. <coughs> I showed you two of his films earlier in the first video. And that's a man named Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman. <coughs> so the other Swedish filmmaker. Um, he has movies that are a lot like Bergman's films. I think Max von Snydow or Sydow and uh, Liv Ullman are actually in them. I don't have those movies. I've only seen a little bit of the first one. I had it recorded on my DVR, but <clears throat> erased it eventually. But anyways, so I mentioned a uh, Czech film called Daisies. I'm sorry, a Polish film series, three colors, uh, blue, white, red that used uh, a lot of uh, deliberate use of color in those movies. <clears throat> and I mentioned another movie that did the same thing, and that's this one here, Cries and Whispers by Ingmar Bergman. This is a film from 1972, only 90 minutes long. And uh, obviously, it's a, it's a Bergman film. It's very depressing. But the use of red is very prominent in this movie. And uh, I wonder what that is. It's, it's about a, a woman who's dying. I think maybe she's dying of like tuberculosis or something. So maybe the red represents that. Um, But, uh, this movie comes with, you know, the Turner Classic Movie Channel. When they, a lot of times when they play a movie, we'll talk about it beforehand. <clears throat> and have a little introduction. And this copy of Cries and Whispers has a, uh, one that Woody Allen did for the Turner Classic Movie Channel. Where he talks about it briefly and um, I've only seen this movie once so we can't talk too much about it sorry but another one that I have is Autumn Sonata And this is from 1978. Bergman made a movie every year. So did Woody Allen. <clears throat> and this one's also 90, a little over 90 minutes long. His movies typically aren't very, very long. You know, I like that a lot in a movie. I like the brevity. But this is uh, about a, a struggling family that's a theme you see a lot of in, in Bergman's films is family troubles. Uh, I think uh, there's an overbearing mother who's a pianist and uh, her daughter is a pianist as well. And uh, <clears throat> she's very critical of her. And they have another daughter who's developmentally delayed. So, as I showed you earlier, I also have uh, was it, uh, The Seventh Seal and Wild Strawberries, but take a gander on this, folks. 
The Complete Works of Ingmar Bergman. This uh, still is taken from a movie Persona that he did, which is a, one of my favorite Bergman films. Here's the back. The man himself. The man, the myth, the legend. Bergman <clears throat> has the same birthday as my father. They were both born on Bastille Day, July 14th. And this comes with a nice big book that I've yet to read. I've yet to watch all these movies. Actually, as of this recording, don't tell anyone, it's between you and me. I'm uh, watching the cinema of Woody Allen. Uh, so think of that as you will, but maybe after that I'll finally get into this book of Bergman. So here's a little piece of paper that would, uh, similar to what you see on the back of Criterion movies. Just talking about all the movies that are in it from 1946 to 1984. And then, uh, and then there's a movie from 2003 called Sarah Band. And I don't know if that's, uh, if that's a feature he did or if it's a documentary. I'm not entirely sure when Bergman died. Anyways, so here it is, kitties. Is it this way? Maybe I'm the kitty. Ingmar Bergman's cinema is a scene from the seventh seal. Some stills of Bergman. Or not stills, stills, I mean, they're photos. But as you can see here, there's all of the movies. And I guess many series, I think. Uh, Fanny and Alexander, and Scenes from a Marriage. I think those were mini-series. But you know, I can't talk about all of these. Maybe I'll make another video, <clears throat> or another video series about the cinema of Ingmar Bergman. But, uh, you know, uh, in college I fancied myself as a film historian. But um, just doing this series right now kind of shows me just how much of a little pissant I am when it comes to talking about world cinema and, uh, and art house films. I guess I felt a little more confident uh, in classes where, you know, my classmates didn't really know who they were, these filmmakers, and... Uh, some of my professors did, but didn't care about them as much as me. <clears throat> so, is this going to be a short video? I mean, my Swedish films, it's only 10 minutes long so far. Let me see which ones I can I can talk about here. The earliest ones, I don't know. These actually these aren't <clears throat> these aren't in order from when they were made. You know, the, the first DV, uh, the first Blu-ray has. Smiles of a Summer Night. That was made in 1955. And then disc two 
as Crisis and Ship to India. And those were made in 46 and 47. And then after that is Wild Strawberries from 55, or 57, I'm sorry. So that's really interesting. I mean, uh, I wonder why they did that. I guess I'll have to find out more about this because maybe that's how they want you to to regard Bergman's cinema. The, the, the folks at Criterion. It's very interesting. I'm glad I picked this up <clears throat> when I did because I don't think it's going to be in stock very long. Let me see if I can... Okay. So on the 10th disc, there's a movie called Passion of Anna. And uh, if you've seen another video I did about actualized.org, which is another business slash service uh, that I appreciate a lot. <clears throat> I talked about a movie called The Passion of Anna, briefly, very briefly. And uh, that was one of the movies that was on Netflix back when I was like 19. And um, so that was the first Bergman film that I watched. And you know, if this is the Bergman episode, I might as well talk about Woody Allen. So. Uh, I mean, however you feel about him is, is uh, however you feel, but but watching his movies, he would always talk about Ingmar Bergman and Federico Fellini, uh, The Grand Illusion, which Grand Illusion is uh, the first <clears throat> Criterion film. Uh, if you look at the spines, they have spine numbers for which they were uh, sort of, I guess, inducted. Uh, it, to me, it feels like they're inducted. Uh, it would certainly be an honor for me if I made some movies that were in the Criterion Collection. But, but so, um, back then, when I was 19, they had almost all of Woody Allen's movies on Netflix. <coughs> And so that's what made me decide to watch uh, Bicycle Thieves and uh, Eight and a Half, The Battleship Potemkin, although I don't think uh, Woody ever talked about The Battleship Potemkin, but, but he would talk about Bergman, and the only Bergman film they had on Netflix then, and since then, as far as I know, was The Passion of Anna. And The Passion of Anna, I think, is a... Um, people associate it with another Bergman film. I think it's this one here, Shame. They're both on disc 10 in the... the Bergman collection. Let me just get a good look there. And in Passion of Anna, there are cutscenes where somebody's interviewing the actors and talking about their characters in the middle of the movie. And uh, I think both of these movies, Shame and Passion of Anna, have uh, little clips from the other film. I know, I remember last time I watched Passion of Anna. I noticed that, but but anyways, yeah, I never I never seen that before in a movie. In the middle of the movie, they're interviewing the actors and talking about how the actors feel about their characters, what they think they're gonna do. One woman says uh, she thinks her character is gonna commit suicide. 
but I've seen uh, something similar to that in uh, uh, at least one of Woody Allen's movies, uh, Husbands and Wives. Although, I think he did it in another movie as well. Can't remember. But, um... There aren't a lot. There isn't a lot, I mean, that I can talk about as far as Bergman goes without comparing it to Woody Allen. I mean, that movie Autumn Sonata When uh, Woody Allen would do more serious movies, people would compare them to uh, Bergman, and I think they were talking about this movie in particular, Autumn Sonata. Specifically, uh, <clears throat> Interiors and Another Woman. But anyways, back to Bergman. So, uh, this movie here, Persona, is a, uh, I think a very, his most artistically made movie. Maybe that's a, a dumb way of putting it, but I mean, take a look at this shot. That's something that a photographer would have in his or her por portfolio, and a lot of the, a lot of the shots are set up this way in this movie, and that's something that I, I like a lot from a director. Although I suppose his cinematographer, Sven Nixt, I think that's how he pronounced his last, his name. Maybe that's uh, <clears throat> more attributed to him. But yeah, it's a little, kind of reminds me of uh, I guess I'll say a, a David Lynch film, a racer head especially. But that's really it for for the Swedish films. When I thought about making this YouTube channel, I thought maybe I'd set up a Patreon where I would <coughs> analyze Bergman's films, and that would be a good place to start. But maybe I'll do that, I don't know. Seems like I'm a little ways away before getting paid to do this kind of thing. This is all new to me, folks. So that's it for the Swedish films. Let's see what's next. Ah, the Asian films.